All right, so in today's video, I thought it would be helpful to show you how to find the best birding hotspots near you and the tools that you can utilize to make your birding experiences even better. All right, so first what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to ebird.org and hit that explore button. And then you're gonna go down to explore hotspots and click that link. And then that's going to take you to this map. And so just zoom in to the area that you're uh, in or that you're looking to bird in until you start to see these little tiny tags. And I'm not gonna show you exactly where I'm at, but I'm currently in the town of Lehigh, Utah. And so you're gonna look at um, you're going to look at the dots around you and, um, the darker, the color of the dot, the more diverse of species live in that area. And so if you click on an orange dot like this one, there's going to be about 200 species there. So that takes me to North Lake park. Um, and that looks like a great place to go birding. Um, you can click on the right corner. There's a directions tab click on that, that's gonna take you to Google Maps and then you can click directions. I'm not gonna do that because that's gonna tell you exactly what address I am for privacy reasons. But what that'll do is that'll tell you, you know, exactly how to get there, how many species you can expect to see there. You can see what species you can find there. And um, this place happens to be about 12 minutes from my house, so, or from where I'm staying. So um, we're gonna go check out this place and, um, yeah, it's fairly easy to find birding hotspots all around you. Um, if there's not a lot of birding hotspots, you know, where you live or around you, then you can make your own. Go to places that have diverse bird species and just start um, creating your own hotspots. Uh, when you check into the eBird app, you can create or suggest a place become a hotspot. So that'll be for other people's benefit as well as your own. All right, so it's not enough to just look it up online, but I figured we'd go to North Lake Park that I looked up and see what birds we can find. All right, so not a lot of luck so far. We've seen some Northern Roughwing Swallows and we've seen Western Kingbird. Oh, looks like we got a quail up here. All right, I spoke too soon. We were able to see two California quail, a few killdeer. Um, so red, red winged blackbirds as well. So we've started to kick off the species and we're picking up the pace a bit. All right, so we were able to see the Western Kingbird hanging out with some, uh, a morning dove. And then we saw, well, you can hear a morning dove maybe in the background right now, I hear right now. So I think we're up to 10 species, so not too bad. All right, we're picking up a uh, common yellow throat. We're picking up barn swallows. We actually see barn swallows too, but they're hard to capture on camera. And we're picking up American goldfinch. So three more species on the list, we're up to 12. That's pretty good. Um, we'll see what else we can catch on camera. All right, I just got my lifer sandhill crane and uh, a little frustrating. I could not, I could not get it on, on camera. I, I had it in my lens and my camera wouldn't focus. It kept focusing on the mountains behind it. So life or sandhill crane, I hope I can get some shots of it, but we'll see uh, if I can get some before we leave. All right, so we got song sparrow, which is really good shots of a song sparrow, which is really cool. And then um, really good shots of yellow headed blackbird, which I love those birds. I know they're all over the state of Utah, but they're beautiful and I don't get sick of seeing them. 
All right, so we saw a flock of white-faced ibis fly over. We've actually seen quite a few flocks of those fly over, so those are pretty cool to see. Um, they're just way out in the distance, and my camera didn't really focus on them very well, so um, yeah. All right, I was able to see a black-chinned chin hummingbird just perched on top of a tree over there. It was kind of lucky it just looked out of place. Um, but I think we're up to 19 species, so it's actually quite a bit more than I expected. It's kind of hot. It was 85 degrees when we got here, and we got here in the evening around 6.30, well, 7, 7.15. So um, not bad for a new hot spot. through the trees the temperature difference is insane temperatures probably dropped five degrees or so you can feel it noticeably um, but we just saw a yellow warbler every time I go to record it it flew off but I have footage of one so I'll throw that up on the screen now all right we're heading back out because we're getting eaten alive by mosquitoes should have wore some bug repellent. But to finish it off, we saw a black-billed magpie, a few of them on a tree out here. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'll have the total for you when we get back to the car. All right, back at the house. Um, just a recap of today. We saw 21 species. We traveled, we started traveling at 7, 13 p.m. and we went for an hour and a half. And we walked just under two miles, 1.8 miles. As you can see, it's super easy to look up the hot spots for birding in your area. I hope this was helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for your support. We're trying to hit 300 subscribers by the end of the summer and I think we're, uh, we can do it. I think we'll get there. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope to see you all next time on Brad Eyed Birding. Thank you.